now on the emerging trend side so if you see on global level so uh, business is shared by the banks and nbfc is in equal portion 50 50 and uh, if you say that if uh, 1 lakh crore business is done by nbfc so they you can say that 1 lakh crore business is done by the banks also but in india the contribution is only of 15 percent in the financial system and uh, banks represent around 58 percent and uh, other financial institution insurers mutual fund pension funds they accounted for 26 percent around but the 15 percent number is also big for india because the indian economy is also you know big as compared to other countries and if you see the you know graphs so even in to, uh, 22 there is a 12 percent growth rate visible means business is growing by 12 percent every year in nbfc and uh, i don't have the data for 23 but i'm sure it is more than 13 or 13 percent only because what i heard from others also <laughs> now just before starting you know uh, that uh, the uh, compliances of the nbfc so i just prepared this slide which gives you the uh, brief background or the brief history of the nbfc's uh, how you uh, know nbfc's came in picture and how regulations uh, uh, you know uh, came in picture and the way how it is going on so if you see that 1964 the new chapter inserted by the uh, government in rbi act which talks about section 45 ia and other sections also connected to the uh, nbfc that a, a non financial institution business can be uh, done by in a company but under certain conditions which are laid down under chapter 3b in 1974 after 10 years uh, new sections were inserted regarding inspection rights given to the rbi then enhanced penalties provisions came in picture then after uh, 20 years 1994 first time prudential norms came so now prudential norm means what prudential norms means whatever loans given by the nbfcs will classified as the asset of the company in the balance sheet so how you will consider those asset as a standard assets means that 100% money will come from the borrower or 50% money come from the borrower or there is you have a doubt so that's why these kind of norms introduced in 1994 basis of Shah working committee <laughs> then in 1998 first time big regulations came in picture that we still call is that nbfc regulations 1998 and these are on the basis of non deposit taking nbfc or deposit taking uh, nbfc's public fund they can accept public deposits or not so first time the first categorization came in 1998 then in uh, 2006 first time they have you know further categorized nbfc which are non deposit taking into two categories systemically important or non systemically important important and the criteria first time they have fixed is 100 crores but in 2014, uh, uh, I still aware that November 10th was the date or 9th November 2014 revised regulatory framework, you know, introduced with a lot of regulations. And one of the regulation was that, you know, they have enhanced the net on fund criteria from 25 lakh to 2 crores. Then systemic criteria also increased from 100 to 500 crores. And the first time they introduced governance uh, disclosures, uh, others requirements. So in governance, they have defined a requirement of uh, uh, risk management committee, uh, audit committee, nom nomination committee, fit and proper status for the systemically important, basically that point of time. And then the prudential norms, they have first time standardized that, you know, uh, different, different categories they have defined for the prudential norms, like on the standard assets, 0.25% provisions uh, required to be created for non-systemically important. So that kind of... Uh, the rules regulation came and uh, including KYC norms uh, further they have defined in 2014. Now in 2021-22 what happened during pandemic is that uh, uh, government thought that you know they have to uh, further modify the NBFC's classifications because uh, that is urgent requirement because now they are playing a good role in the Indian financial system. So that's why scale-based regulation introduced. 
four nine three zero six NBFCs. So that is a number as on June twenty twenty four. And if you see the number before pandemic, that was in 20, uh, 2019 or 2020, the NBFC's number was around 14,000. So if you see drastically reduction in the NBFC's numbers, I think uh, RBI has around five, you know, canceled or you know, somehow they have reduced around four to 5,000 NBFC's. And out of that base layer NBFCs are 8,857. So if you say that this is a big number, base layer NBFCs means those NBFCs whose asset size is less than 1,000 crore. And the middle layer NBFCs means those NBFCs whose asset size is more than 1,000 crore. 440. And out of these 440, certain NBFCs are selected for the upper layer. RBI time to time decide that which NBFCs should be classified uh, under the upper layer basis of their several parameters, which they uh, assess at the time of inspection also. Like if NBFC is giving loans only in the priority sector, priority sector means they are only providing loans to the agriculture uh, for the agriculture purposes, or maybe the real estate and uh, asset size grown uh, tremendously from 1000 crore to 10,000 crore, 20,000 crore. And uh, basis of that parameter, RBI will say that this NBFC requires classification into upper layer category. And uh, the beauty of the upper layer is also that within three years, listing can be done by these NBFCs. So they are eligible for the listing also after three years, RBI allow them. Uh, basically, uh, SEBI always ask NOC from the RBI whenever any NBFC goes for the listing. So they, they will not uh, object on the listing also. Top layer NBFCs as on date, no one. Uh, top layer in short, I can say that for your better understanding and for in simplified terms is that you can say that uh, which are highly unique, qualified, important and can be considered equivalent to the bank. But as on date, they have not categorized, uh, categorized any of the NBFC into top layer. Next is the NOF, 2 crore to 10 crores. And see the beauty of the regulations of scale-based regulation is that they have say, said that uh, existing NBFC needs to increase the net on fund after a certain point of time. Like by 2025, they need to reach uh, uh, net on fund of 5 crore and then simultaneously by 2027 10 crores but for the for the new companies they have not mentioned anything but when you will go for the application go for the registration rbi will say that have you complied with 10 crore nof now 2324 now what is the scenario rbi aims to apply uniform regulations for nbfcs and banks like if you see frequency of credit informations now by monthly within 15 days nbfc also required to file with civil or any other bureau all the credit data of uh, borrowers willful default screening and reviewing committee so willful default is also applicable on every nbfc whose asset size is more than 1000 crore so those NBFCs, basically middle layer NBFCs need to constitute now a screening committee, review committee. Earlier, these guidelines were applicable on housing finance companies, HFCs, but now it is applicable on every NBFC, which falls under the middle layer. And these are also equally applicable for the banks. Now for the digital lending guidelines in April two thousand in April twenty twenty four they came out with key fact statement revised formats and more detailed where you need to disclose APR also charges also detail of uh, lending partners digital lending app lending service providers and this key fact statement needs to be adopted for all loans which will be given by the bank and NBFC. Then uh, Sumit already mentioned about, you know, compliance monitoring and, you know, tool you require January circular came and uh, this is equally applicable for banks and every NBFC. 
irrespective of a layer in which layer nbfc falls uh, information technology governance risk control and assurance practices so here i just want to highlight is that uh, this is equally applicable again for the bank and for the NBFCs. But the beauty of these laws is that, or the regulation is that, this is applicable for the uh, middle layer NBFCs, upper layer NBFCs. And in the same circular, they said that earlier circular related to IT framework to, that was that came in, I think, 2016 or 17. Now we are uh, obsolete, uh, now we are revoking that. But now there is a now, even I am also in doubt which IT circular will be applicable for the base layer NBFCs or the NBFCs whose asset size is less than 500 crores. So there is a lot of ambiguity because uh, if you if you are able to find out, just tell me, uh, tell me, me also, you know, because I feel that after reading these uh, new guidelines, which is equally applicable for the bank and NBFCs, I'm not able to find out the name of uh, base layer NBFCs in those new guidelines. Framework for the settlements and write-offs. This is also uh, came uh, in 2023, uh, I think in November 2023 or before that, that came. And this is also equally applicable for banks and NBFC. If you, if customer is not paying the loan, then how you can do in a settlement with the, uh, the borrower? or how you can uh, technically write off that particular account from the your box. So settlement can be done within a maximum period of three months. If you say that customer will be in next six months, this is what I have agreed, then that it will be considered as a restructuring of the account, not the settlement. So settlement needs to be done within the three months, whatever you agree through settlement letters. Next and important is that internal ombudsman. Uh, here is also ambiguity that uh, base layer NBFCs are falling under in, uh, internal ombudsman criteria or not. But uh, CIMS portal, complaint management uh, uh, portal of RBI, uh, willfully in base layer NBFC can also register and uh, they can. Uh, take the logins they can appoint the nodal officers if any customer will file the complaint on cms portal so that will be for automatically forwarded to the nbfc so this is my recent experiences also that uh, you can willfully go and apply for the cms portal but internal ombudsman is something which is a uh, few uh, guidelines uh, defined for middle layer and you know upper layer so currently not applicable for the base layer, but you will fully, if you want to appoint, it's a good practice that if you can want to appoint internal ombudsman also, because your company is in digital uh, landing business as on date. So willfully you can appoint internal ombudsman also. So this is an overview. In 2023-24, you will see that if majority of regulations, 75% of the regulations, are similar for the NBFCs and bank, which are equally applicable on both of these uh, financial institutions. Welcome to Complinity Technologies. Complinity is India's leading governance, risk and compliance software helping companies to manage their compliance, contracts, litigation, legal updates, inter-financial controls and more. Complinity is a one-stop shop for all GRC needs. With our proprietary 12 GRC modules and real-time legal updates on 2000 plus laws and 24,000 plus compliances. All in an integrated platform that is easy to use with automated alerts and risk management capabilities. Is why compliance managers, general counsels and chief financial officers choose Complinity every time. Join the most innovative and prestigious brands that use Complinity. Automating your compliance management, request a demo at Complinity.com.